Crawl this bait. These fish are not wanting to chase stuff. There we go. There we go. Oh yeah. There we go. Hey, we're locating these pre-spawn bass. <laughs> That's what we're looking for, guys. I'm Travis Moran with Lucky Tackle Box. Today we're using Outcast Tackles 401 Craw Jig, which is designed by Troy Morrow. Now, if you can see the head of this bait. What we got going on is it looks like the tail end of a crawdad. And the idea is that thing's gonna be banging down as you're retrieving it along the bottom, creating erratic motions and triggering these strikes. But what I like about it most, and we're gonna talk about right now, is that it really allows me to feel out the bottom as I'm retrieving it so I can find those harder bottom situations where these fish are really gonna be hoarded into and, uh, and basically locating themselves around. So once again, guys, uh, let's break this down from rigging, retrieval, and location. All right, rigging this thing's pretty simple. Basically, you slide on whatever creature bait or whatever bait you want to use with it, and uh, you slide it up to that little uh, corkscrew, then you got to screw that bait all the way in until it's flush with the head. That's really going to keep that bait locked on there. All right, for the uh, equipment I'm using, I've got uh, Daiwa's Tatula here. I want to use a slow to medium speed gear ratio because I don't want to retrieve this too fast. Um, I really want to count the, you know, the, basically you say counting the rocks down. I want to feel it hit every rock. Uh, then I spool up, I'm using 20 pound Seaguar fluorocarbon. Um, this is pretty heavy because I got dark, I got real stained water, so I can get away with a nice heavier line. But you can use anywhere from 12 to 20 pound mono or fluorocarbon for this technique, depending on uh, you know the cover and everything you've got around you. Um, and then lastly, I spool that up with Castaways six foot eight worm jig rod. This is a heavy rod because I, you know, that there, there doesn't need to be a lot of finesse with this. I'm really bumping this around down there. I'm hitting a lot of cover and I really want to be able to horse these fish out. This retrieve is so simple. All you're going to do is cast this out, let it sink all the way to the bottom, and with this rod tip down, you just have a nice slow retrieve. And this can vary depending on how active these fish are. But you can see right now I've got a medium, well, medium retrieve right here, and I really want to feel out the bottom. So as my rod tip is kind of thumping away, that's that bait deflecting off of rocks. And as it deflects off rocks, it's going to create that little erratic motion these fish want. Every once in a while, if you're deflecting a lot of rocks down there, you can slow it down and let it sit for a second, because that means you're in a high percentage area. Sometimes they'll hit bait moving kind of faster, and uh, sometimes, like today, you're going to have to move that bait a little bit slower as you come through that gravel. But I want to feel out for hard bottom. Oh, this is a good fish. I'm looking for that hard bottom, and as, I, as I'm bringing it out in front of the dock, I have no idea if there's rocks out here or anything. But the second I hit that hard bottom, I slowed down my retrieve because I know that's where there's going to be. And watch this, you guys are going to like this. This fish just absolutely choked it, right? See these red lips? This fish is not wearing lipstick right now. This is from eating crawdads. When you get these fish that have these red jaws, real red lips, that's because they're eating the crawdads. They need to eat, uh, eat up on crawdads this time of the year because it really helps them get ready for that spawn. So if you find that, you know you're in the right area. This fish, there's gonna be a lot more where this came from. All right, location. With this bait, you know, you got the exposed hook. You can actually rig it weedless if you want, if you're around kind of a lot of cover. But the idea is you're really looking for gravel areas with this. And that's why it's a perfect bait for these pre-spawn fish, because that's what these fish are looking for. So what I like to use it for is I'm actually, I'll cover a bank and I'll really just make a lot of casts. But once I feel this bait banging into a lot of stuff down there, that usually means I'm around some kind of gravel bottom. And that's where these fish are gonna hone into this time of the year because they're looking to feed up and they're also looking for hard bottom where they're gonna lay their eggs uh, in another month or two as the water keeps warming up. I had the weeds. No, no, I have a fish. Here we go, right? There we go. <laughs> there we go, guys. This bait is just perfect because what we're doing right now is these fish are looking for hard bottom, you guys. They want to find these gravel areas to feed up and also to lay their eggs. So a lure like Outcast Tackles craw jig can help you find those areas because you can feel out the bottom but also when you do find those areas it excels because it deflects off all those different rocks down there creates that erratic motion which triggers these uh, strikes once again guys i'm travis with lucky tackle box if you enjoyed the video throw us a thumbs up and subscribe to our youtube channel and also for any of the gear i'm wearing or any of the tackle i'm using check the description box below and there's going to be links to anywhere you can get those for yourself this one caught up okay it just came out of there Oh, there we go. Oh, he broke me off.
<laughs> Guys, rule number one. You're gonna see me do this a lot because I don't follow my own rules, but you've got to know that when you are fishing around a lot of cover, banging a lot of rocks and things like that, fishing around docks, you gotta check your line for frays. I'm using 20 pound line and I just broke off a great fish and it was because I didn't check. I had a weak spot in the line and now I'm gonna have a weak spot in this video, but hopefully you will learn from this mistake and you will not make the same mistakes. Don't repeat my mistakes.